Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. our viewers are not going to follow all the numbers right. and the mathematics, but I, I think the key here, if I understand it correctly, is that you've got these resonances going on yes. throughout the brain at the, at the neuronal level and at the subneuronal level uh, down to the microtubules and even uh, below the microtubules to the uh, quantum level. The, to the quantum level. And all of these levels. And below that to space time geometry, which is how you get the heart problem. Uh, all of these levels have to be uh, somehow orchestrated right. together in order to get what we know of as human subjective experience. Right. In fact, orchestrated, which was the term we came up with for to uh, organize the objective production, is, is also uh, metaphorically appropriate because I think in some sense consciousness is more like music than it is a computation. Mm -hmm. You have this multi-scalar vibrational hierarchy yeah. and a lot of people agree with that but they take it only down to the neuronal level so mm -hmm. they're just truncating it at a very high level. If you go down to this, you have uh, uh, from 10 to the 12th, you have 12 orders of magnitude. Mm -hmm. And Otterbahn showed these repeating resonance patterns, triplets of triplets at all mm -hmm. these levels. Yeah. And so I think it's more like music with resonances across scale. Now my best guess is that one of the reasons that so many academics are having trouble with your theory is exactly that. They, they don't relate to the metaphor of music and, <laughs> and the orchestra. They're still thinking about a mechanism, a clock or a computer. Right. I think a computer is, uh, is, is not the way to go. I mean, yeah. uh, you could say, yeah, we compute, but a lot of things compute depending on how you define it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, you know, systems generally interact and there's a result, so everything's a computation in some sense, but I think that misses the point. Um, I th a multiscalar vibrational hierarchy going from higher all the way down to 10 to the 12th hertz mm -hmm. and, and below that. Yeah. And 10 to the 12th hertz is also where anesthesia works. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, uh, one of the, I think the essential way to test, con to test a theory is to see if it explains consciousness and the loss of consciousness with anesthesia. Yeah. So um, uh, mo I've studied anesthetic mechanisms for many, many years. I'm an anesthesiologist and I've published a lot in this, in this field. And uh, most people would say that anesthesia works on membrane proteins, mm -hmm. uh, GABA receptors, acetylcholine receptors, serotonin, and a few others. Uh, and in fact, they do bind to them, but, but uh, they don't all bind to, to all of them. And one will open the channel, one will close the channel. There's no unitary mechanism and actually, the, the really uh, advanced thinkers in this area have discarded that. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, beginning about uh, 10 years ago, two things. One is that uh, they found quantum coherence in plant photosynthesis mm -hmm. so the, uh, in sunlight. So the yeah. idea that you need absolute zero temperature is, is out the window now because plants do it. If a potato or a rutabaga can figure out how to use quantum coherence, our brains can probably do it, yeah. is, is an argument. And mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's, it's kind of a universal thing in biology. Well, now let me ask you, that, that sounds like such a strong argument. Has it been persuasive? No, uh, because people, people, you know, they don't want to go there. And, and, and one argument against it, you know, I'll be my own critic here, is that in, in the uh, FMO protein in, in plant photosynthesis, the quantum state goes just uh, about a nanometer mm -hmm. and is very short-lived. Yeah. Now, if you imagine taking that and making a linear chain or in a helix like a microtubule, it's going to be much, much longer and you can get resonances, you get much, much longer coherence time. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, Honorbon has shown that in his mm -hmm. uh, nanotechnology experiments. Yeah. So um, my colleagues, Jack Jasinski and, and Travis, well, let me back up. A guy at the University of Pennsylvania, beginning about 10 years ago, Rod Eckenhoff, showed that with systematic uh, experiments, showed that anesthetics bind to 70 different proteins in neurons, mm -hmm. half in the membrane and half in the cytoplasm, including tubulin. He then did genomic and proteomic analysis of which genes were turned on, uh, and uh, which gives you an idea of the function of mm -hmm. uh, a functional, uh, at w which of those are inhibiting the functions. And it turned out the tubulin, microtubules, were the, were the answer. And they seem uh -huh. to mediate the, uh, the functional aspect of uh, the, the there, there would take away 
the functional has been taken away under anesthesia. Mm -hmm. And they also did optogenetic studies that, sh that point to microtubules. So uh, that's just beginning to come out. And um, um, Jack and Travis and I have done work in computer simulation of uh, these terahertz vibrations showing that anesthesia, all the anesthetics inhibit the terahertz oscillation proportional to their potency. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a paper that's, that we're revising for a major journal right now that will make that argument uh, quite strongly. So we're going we're gonna to come out and say that anesthesia acts by dampening the fastest, smallest level of this hierarchy, and that, ca and that dampens mm -hmm. the whole cascade. And that's which what, which that's, I, I gather when you're talking about vibrations in the terahertz range right. going on in the human brain that is so far outside the normal training of people and right. neurophysiology that right. they have an awful hard time relating to it. And you know, they could also say with some validity that, well, that's way too fast for anything that we know about. You yeah. know, the brain acts, you know, uh, milliseconds mm -hmm. and whatnot. Uh, but um, with this cascade, terahertz, gigahertz, megahertz, kilohertz, then hertz, it's the bottom level of this hierarchy mm -hmm. cascade. 